Okay, now I want to talk about the chemistry that's involved. Basically, we're going to need collodion to coat the glass. We're going to need silver nitrate to sensitize the collodion. Uh, we need developer to develop the image, and we need some fixer to fix the image permanently. Uh, word of caution, uh, the collodion, when you're working with the collodion, there, there are some toxic materials involved, especially this cadmium bromide. It is a cancer-causing agent, uh, so you do need to wear a respirator, um, gloves, eye protection when you're working with this. Uh, it does involve working with ether, which is highly aromatic. Um, so you do want to wear a chemical, organic chemical respirator when you're working with your collodion mixture. Uh, I, I have several different manuals that I go through. Uh, these instructional manuals, they give you all the information you need to get started and work through the product pro process. Uh, they give you all the recipes, all the chemistry that's, that's required. Many of these recipes are just a starting point. Okay, to get started on the collodion, uh, the term collodion comes from a Greek word, collodios. Uh, it means a glutinous, very sticky substance. And that's what it is. It's very, very sticky. It adheres to glass or tin really well. In fact, um, a man named Dr. Parker out of Boston in the mid-1800s, he, he discovered it. He, he dissolved uh, cotton fibers into sulfuric and nitric acid, added a little ether to it, and uh, developed a bandage, a way to uh, close up sutures and wounds using this a very sticky substance. And then a little bit later, a Frenchman uh, thought it'd be, be useful for the photographic process, and then uh, Scott Archer, an Englishman, put it all together uh, using the collodion product on glass and saturating, sensitizing it with uh, silver silver nitrate and made an image that way. So there's kind of a group effort uh, starting from scientists, medical doctors, uh, and then uh, photographers getting in, involved with that. So uh, for the collodion, if you want to do everything by hand, uh, you need pure collodion, uh, you need ether, you need cadmium bromide, and you need some potassium iodide. Uh, some people also add ammonium iodide to this. All this can be bought from Bostic and Sullivan. Uh, you will also need some Everclear grain alcohol. You'll need a lot of this. This is used through uh, several of the different uh, products that we'll be mixing up. So this is the handmade version. If you want to uh, get really involved in it and mix it by hand, you'll need these five, five products. It is a little bit complicated, but totally doable following the recipe. <clears throat> what I like to do is, from Bostic and Sullivan, I buy uh, the collodion and then I, I buy their bromide iodizer. These two products are mixed together uh, at a specific ratio to give you the working collodion. So here you have, have two products. Uh, the easiest way to go about this is just to buy the pre-mixed collodion. This is iodized, everything mixed together. Uh, it's ready to go right out of the bottle. Uh, this is from uvpphotographics.com. They have several different recipes according to your needs, whether you're doing portraits or landscape, indoors, outdoors. Okay, now I want to talk about the silver nitrate. This is an easy uh, product to mix, mix together. Basically, you need um, 90 grams of silver nitrate and 1,000 milliliters of water, distilled water. We mix these together, it gives you a 9% working solution of silver nitrate. Um, usually silver nitrate comes in a bottle of 100 grams. Uh, I have removed 10 grams of it, so I have uh, 90 grams in here. I'm going to mix with water. Basically, uh, you just you know, sprinkle it in. This I bought from Bostic and Sullivan. Uh, you can go online and find many different sources for, for the silver nitrate. You want to get the purest product available. Uh, Bostic and Sullivan, they, they, uh, they work with 
alternative photographic processes so they know what the uh, customer needs. Theirs is finely ground, it's very pure, dissolves quickly. Need, do need to be careful with the silver nitrate, you don't want to get it on your hands. It's an oxidizer, it'll kind of burn. Uh, you do not want to get it in your eyes, so wear some sort of uh, eye protection. Basically we're trying to get a 9% solution and we are going to test the pH on it. This needs to be somewhat acidic. Uh, should have a pH level of 4, between 4 and 6. Uh, ideally, about the 4 range. You see that it's kind of cloudy, but that will clear overnight. So I'm going to test it. I've got my pH strip. You just dip it in, uh, let it let it react a little bit, give it a few seconds, and then matching it to my color chart here, it's right at four, pH four, so that's ideal. So the next thing to do is to measure the specific gravity. So I have a hygrometer in here that measures specific gravity. Specific gravity of pure water is one. This uh, typically gives us uh, 1.0a, 1.07, somewhere around that, that range. We are right at 1.08. So that's gravity. We want to remember that. I'll write it on the on the uh, my beaker here, my storage bottle, so that after I work with this solution for a while, say making 20 or 30 plates, I'll need to do some maintenance on the silver nitrate. I, I'll re-measure the specific gravity level. If it's high or low, I may add. Uh, depending on the reading, I'll either add a little more silver or I'll add some distilled water. Uh, so that way you always have your base, 1.08 uh, specific gravity to go back to. That's what you want to match, you know, when you're doing your maintenance. All right, the, um, the developer, uh, we use ferrous sulfate as our activator, uh, a reducing agent. That's what brings out the image. So I'm going to mix up a solution here. I have 175 milliliters of water. I'm going to add seven and a half grams of iron sulfate. Uh, where's my stirring stick? Here's my high-tech stirring stick. So you just want to dissolve that in, into the water. This iron the spare sulfate, it is a food grade product, so it, it is not toxic. Still don't, I would recommend tasting it. Uh, to that we're going to add some glacial acetic acid, that's what this is. Uh, this is the restrainer. This prevents the, the iron from acting too quickly with your silver nitrate image. And then to that I'm going to add 10 milliliters of grain alcohol. That allows the solution to flow smoothly across the plate. So you want that to sit for a few minutes uh, and then we'll filter it. But you always want to filter everything before you use it, before and after you use it to keep it clean. Uh, so that's, that's uh, our developer. Uh, the fixer is sodium thiosulfate. It's been used as a fixing agent in photography for ever since the beginning of, of photography. So to this, uh, we've got 500 milliliters of water. I'm adding 75 grams of, of sodium thiosulfate. And we'll stir these up until it dissolves. These dissolve very, very quickly, very easily in water. And that's, that's about it. Uh, that's it.